May grace and peace be yours in abundance today and always. So here we are on the second Sunday in Advent, and we're on a new kind of awareness of COVID-19. So basically our children's team had an exposure and uh, we're waiting out quarantines for everybody. So it's a reality that uh, the person that had the diagnosis was fully vaccinated. So it's just this idea that things do still break through. So just that awareness for everyone. If you have not received your vaccines yet, if you've been waiting for that, or, or if children haven't gotten to the doctor yet to have it done, we will be doing a vaccine clinic here at the church on Friday from noon until 6 p.m. So the uh, health department, we are we're collaborating as a faith-based initi initiative through the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, and they've asked us to kind of get an idea how many people might be coming. So if you think you might be coming, if you'll just sign up the list out there, then that will give us an idea about how many vaccines that uh, they need to bring, and they will be bringing pediatric doses also, boosters one and two. I think Johnson & Johnson is the only one that will not uh, be coming this time. So just an awareness that, uh, gosh darn, it felt like we were so close to being uh, in, in the good with all of this. And yet here we're going to probably have to take a couple of steps back. So just awareness. So that's why we are wearing our masks. That is why we're trying to maintain our space and just realize that uh, as much as we all want it to be over with, let's stay as healthy as possible through this Advent and Christmas season so we can enjoy time with family. So with all that bad news, how about if we draw in a deep cleansing breath, release it, and be prepared to encounter God on this, the second Sunday of Advent. <laughs>
I invite you to stand as you are able to join with me in the call to worship. A messenger will be born. Peace Someone to show the way. Peace A world is waiting. Peace Lord, we, your people, wait patiently, hanging on for Advent peace. Lord, we bring you ourselves. We do bring you ourselves. You may be seated. The colliers will come forward to help us light the Advent wreath. joy and hope. We can't wait to reconnect with family, with history and tradition, with the wonderful time of freedom and loving support. We can't wait to go home. There are those who fear going home, however, and there are times when going home brings back memories that are not so good, not so healing. We are reminded of when we didn't fit in, when we didn't measure up, when we weren't loved, like we needed to be loved. Home can be a difficult place for some. The prophet Malachi tells us that even when we are in the hottest of fires, there is a presence who can make us better, who can refine and purify. John the Baptist tells us that the road home is always under construction. Mountains to be leveled, valleys to be filled in, to make the way smooth, to make way the the path smooth that leads us to our true destination, where we can live in peace and unity with all. We light these candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace, as a sign of our assurance that though the road is hard, we believe it is worth the journey. It is time to go home. Thank you, Colliers. It's now time for children to come forward. Joseph, and he has a son named James Joseph. What name are we passing? 
going on. Joseph, that's right. And you know what Joseph means? Joseph means God will increase. And I don't think we even thought about that. We just thought it was a family name that we wanted to pass on. Sometimes you're named after someone just because your parents like the name. You know, so there are all different reasons why we name you the way we do. And I looked at some of your names because I wonder if you've ever thought about that, what your name means or where it comes from. Have you ever thought about that? Are you called the nickname? Josie, is your old name Josie, or is it Jocelyn? Jocelyn. Yeah, I've heard your daddy call you Jocelyn one night, and we know what that means when a parent uses the real name. But, you know what Jocelyn means? It means fair and honest. And Ellie, I haven't heard your daddy use call you a different name. Is it really Ellie or is it Eloise? Eloise. Oh, okay. And Eloise means light. You're bright like that candle. You bring light. And Zoe, your name means life. Yeah. And Jamie's not here, but his name means he who supplants, which is kind of hard for you guys to understand. And John means God is gracious. And those are my grandsons. And Teddy, I didn't know you were going to be here. Does your mommy know what your name means? No? Well, you know what? I'm going to look it up and I will let you know after the service, okay? Because your real name is Theodore, isn't it? Yeah. And we call you Teddy, so we have lots of nicknames. Well, today, when they read the scripture, they're going to be talking about a mom and a dad, Elizabeth and Zechariah, who had a baby. And all the neighbors came to see the baby. You know how neighbors do, just like they probably came to see Manny when Nick Manny was born. And they thought that they would name this baby Zechariah after the daddy. And you know what? They all were so surprised that they didn't name this baby Zechariah. Instead, they named this baby John. And we're going to hear a lot more about John when they read the scripture. So when you go home or talk to your parents, I want you to ask them if they gave you their name because it was a name they really liked or a name that meant something or if you're named after a family member. And do a little research on your name, okay? Okay, can you bow your heads and pray with me, please? Dear God, thank you for giving me a special name. Thank you for making me just the way I am. Help me to be loving and kind to everyone I meet. Amen. And Chance, I did look up your name, and guess what? It means good fortune. So you have a really, really neat name, too. So everyone have a good week. to prayer and to whatever your posture is as I pray 
for us together. Lord God, we thank you for the ministries of those who have gone before us, remembering the great heroes of faith, like John, Elizabeth, and Zechariah's boy, for all the expectation and hope placed on his young shoulders, preparing the way for the one to follow, the cost of which could be, and indeed would be, so high, we witness with some trepidation. Do we overburden our young with expectations and hopes that may burn them out before they are able to withstand the pressures and the stresses? We pray for young people, particularly in a time of such great pressure, from climate change to social media, from reduced opportunities to rising costs, that they might be able to maintain hope and a sense of peace about their futures. We give thanks for all the servants of Christ who have given up themselves to build communities of faithful witness in our cities, towns, and villages. May we in turn build upon that work, finding new ways relevant to our own communities that bring hope, peace, good news, and grace for all people. In communities where hope seems removed, where peace is a twisted joke, where future dreams focus more on survival, where women's rights and education are removed, where violence is unchecked, where corruption is rampant, we pray for people to stand firm. We pray for resilience and fortitude for those seeking to bring restoration and healing, for agencies seeking to bring honesty and truth, and for people like us, ordinary folk to find the courage to speak out, naming what we see taking place. And so into this silence we give to you those things which burden our hearts this day. Into the silence, we give to you the great joy and happiness we've experienced in these few weeks just preceding us. O Lord, hear our prayers of thanksgiving and joy. And we pray for hope and healing and courage and grace and peace and hope for Diana, Philip, Brian, Terry, Teddy, Betty, Clifton, Jay, Will, Nancy, Joel, Vicki, Mariah, Larry, <coughs> Rich, and Diane. Lord, you know their needs. We ask that they be met and that we be moved to be a part of a movement of courage of helping our friend and neighbor this day and always. May it be so. Amen. And now we have the great joy of having our bell choir on our screens this morning.
nice that we are able to do that through this technology. So we're, we're blessed by this. So our scriptures this Advent season, we have both uh, the, the Hebrew text, the Old Testament, and then the message from uh, that comes from the Gospel also. So I read to you from Malachi 3, 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And then the reading from Luke comes from uh, Zechariah, which we've talked about the naming of the baby, that uh, Zechariah was a priest and he had his wife Elizabeth. And Zechariah had the, the pleasure, the the honor to go into the temple to light the incense. And while he was there, an angel appeared to him and said, surprise, that thing you guys have been praying about for probably decades now, you're going to have a baby. And Zachariah was like, oh, that's the funniest thing I've heard all day. And, and probably pretty much discounted the thing that the angel said. And the angel said, it's going to happen, and you're not going to be able to talk. You're going to have to just be quiet for a while now. The reading picks up when Zechariah gets to speak again after the baby comes, after the great miracle has happened that this elderly couple that should not have been able to have a child had a child by a miracle and then they have a connection to Jesus through their family lineage and so in this time that Zechariah speaks he speaks not only of his son but he talks of the Christ child that is yet to be and so these words come from Luke blessed be the Lord God of Israel for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised them up, a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors. And he has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of his salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the depth of in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So here is this father that literally could not speak and had to say, you know, right on a board, we're going to name this baby John. So in the Brad family, it looks like they have the Josephs happening. In my family, it was the Johns. My grandfather, my dad, my brother, and his son. All are named John. So we have that in our, our family history to be Johns. But that, that, if it comes out of nowhere, the people are like, no, 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 tradition says. And guys, wouldn't you guys want to be the most traditional of all? You waited decades to have this child? What are you doing? going off on what this angel said to you. And they did. They went ahead and named the child John, outside of the norm. 
Now, the first part of that scripture, when we're talking in the, the Old Testament, is talking about the refiner's fire. So, when I'm having a really fun day, I play with fire. <laughs> I pretend I'm a silversmith at home. And I have a studio set up, and I start the fire, and you start working on the silver, and you have to, to burn off the impurities out of it. And that's, that's why you use fire, right? Because it's got to get really hot for the next uh, layer of uh, metal to come back out of it so then that you can take it off and work it, and it makes it hard, it makes it malleable, it does all sorts of things. But there's really a fire that's involved. Now, I don't know, does anybody know much about the fuller soap discussion there? I'm thinking some of my colleagues in seminary knew a little bit about it. So it's made to clean the fleece, the wool that comes off of the sheep. You know, if you've ever worked with raw wool at all, I mean, these animals were just out running around, you know, in the pasture and stuff before they came in and everything was sheared off of them. So it's just full of stuff, all sorts of stuff. So they made chemicals to clean this to make it as white as white as they could get it in those days. And because once I head down a rabbit hole, I can't stop myself, I had to find out what that really was. And there were a lot of different kind of plant-based uh, uh, materials that were available to them that they used. And then they used some kind of clays that helped to bleach out some of the wool, too. And then there was this other component that usually we don't talk a lot about in church, urine. It would either be human or animal that would be used to lighten and clean this wool. So not exactly what you're expecting to be used for things to be clean, for things to be brighter. But there's this little bit of a, a um, I think probably inside joke to this, is that things aren't always as they seem. And that people have an opportunity to make a difference in many different ways in making the world a better place. So as the colliers lit the two candles for hope and peace today, I think we're just really aware that we're on a little bit of an edge right now. That, you know, we've got this news about this new variant and we really don't know what that means. We're... Uh, Cedric County is something like 40% of folks are not vaccinated. And so we already know that within our experience that we've had a breakthrough case here within the church of people that were fully vaccinated. So it's, it's not like it's a given that we won't have more cases among us. And that's hard. It's really hard as we're looking forward, you know. Christmas, we all, we all need to do well so we can have a real Christmas because last year was just so bizarre. I want to share with you this, this writing by Elizabeth Gilbert. And she's talking about a way that we can all be markers of peace and hope in the world. She writes, some years ago I was stuck on a crosstown bus in New York City during rush hour. Traffic was barely moving. The bus was filled with cold, tired people who were deeply irritated with one another and with the world itself. Two men barked at each other about a shove that might or not, might not have been intentional. A pregnant woman got on and no one offered her a seat. Rage was in the air. No mercy could be found. But as the bus approached 7th Avenue, the driver got on the intercom. Folks, I know you've had a rough day and you are frustrated. I can't do anything about the weather or the traffic, but here is what I can do. As each one of you gets off the bus, I will reach out my hand to you, and as you walk by me, drop your troubles into the palm of my hand, okay? Don't take your troubles home to your families tonight. Just leave them with me. 
My route goes right by the Hudson River, and when I drive by there later, I will open the window and throw your troubles into the water. It was as if a spell had lifted. Everyone burst out laughing. Faces gleamed with surprised delight. People who had been pretending for the past hour not to notice each other's existence were suddenly grinning at each other. Like, is this guy serious? Oh, he was serious. And at the next stop, just as promised, the driver reached out the palm of his hand and he waited. And one by one, all the exiting commuters placed their hand just above his and mined the gesture of dropping something into his hand. Some people laughed as they did this. Some teared up, but everyone did. The driver repeated the same lovely ritual at the next stop too, and the next, all the way to the river. We live in a hard, hard world, my friends, and sometimes it is extra difficult to be a human being. Sometimes you have a hard day that lasts for several years. You struggle and fail. You lose jobs, money, friends, faith, and love. You witness horrible events unfolding in the news, and you become fearful and withdrawn. There are times when everything seems cloaked in darkness. You long for the light, but don't know where to find it. But what if you are the light? What if you are the very agent of illumination that a dark situation begs for? That's what this bus driver taught me, that anyone can be the light at any moment. And this guy wasn't some big power player. He wasn't a spiritual leader. He wasn't some media savvy influencer. He was a bus driver, one of society's most invisible workers. But he possessed real power, and he used it beautifully for our benefit. When life seems especially grim, or when I feel particularly powerless in the face of the world's troubles, I think of this man and I ask myself, what can I do right now to be the light? Of course, I can't personally end all wars or solve global warming or transform vexing people into entirely different creatures. I definitely can't control traffic, but I do have some influence on everyone I brush up against even if we never speak or learn each other's names. No matter who you are or where you are, or how mundane or tough your situation may seem, I believe you can illuminate your world. In fact, I believe this is the only way the world will ever be illuminated. One bright act of grace at a time, all the way to the river. Are you willing to take it on? And I don't know who you are today, if you're the driver or if you're the rider. But I invite you that if you're a rider today, would you just drop it on your way out the door before you hit that air outside? Just lean over, let it go. Don't take it out whatever it is that's hurting you. And if you are the driver, I want you to know that the world needs more of you, willing to take on the pain, the heartache, the hesitation of those around us. We know we have an opportunity to get vaccines. We know we have the opportunity to bring food for Paxton's blessing. We know we can make a difference in the world if we'll just listen around us. If you haven't looked yet, the hugs tree is up. The hats, underwear, socks, and gloves. All of it's there, ready to be given on Christmas as we hand those things out to those that have need. 
You may bring them in and you may attach them to the tree or you can put them underneath. Together we can make the world a better place. Together. Together. We can light up the darkness that just feels like it keeps coming in waves over us time and time again. And we're going to say no. We're here for each other. To help and to hold for all that might be. Are you willing to do that with me? Are you willing to take the risk of speaking out to your whole bus? It's about your home being filled with joy and love in a time that it could be really hard. It's a choice. It's about letting someone share that which we hardly have words for. And yet we will dig. And we will share. And we will give to those about us. I invite you to have prepared your communion elements. Have you, were you able to pick those up? Is there anyone that has the choir here should be up there? I'm not sure that if anyone needs a gluten-free Option, we do have that available also. Is there anyone that needs gluten free? Okay. And so this table is always open. I say that and then I realize that I have parceled out to you little gifts of communion instead of our, our communal loaf of bread like we would usually do. I truly have faith that it will be sooner, not much later, before we will be able to come to the table as we have in times past. But for right now, this is a precaution we will take as we come to the table which Jesus Christ is the host of. It's not my table. It's not this church's table. It is the table for all. And so I invite you to enter with me into the words that we share together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets and looked for us that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sit in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send away empty. Your own son came to us as a servant, to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will, and freely accepted death on the cross. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, 
He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took up the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty creator, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us say the prayer together that he gave to the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we that are one bread, one body, one sharing of the gift of faith, community of faith. And for this, we give thanks for the cup of redemption, of hope, and love for all people. You may take your bread and you may take your cup. Given for you. Given with love. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is now that we have our time of offering, and with that comes music from our beloved choir.
choir. I invite you to join with me in the prayer of dedication as we dedicate the gifts of our time, our, our talents, and the gift that we recognize in coming to this table, preparing ourselves for the child that is yet coming into the world for us again. Will you join with me in the prayer of dedication? God of peace, even as the world still holds its breath unsure of what the future might bring, we know both your assurance and your expectation that in a way we can have faith and hope. And so we dedicate ourselves once more into that way, committing ourselves as the body of Christ to live into the vision of our purpose for the sake of your kingdom. Use us to benefit that vision, our time and energy, our skills and resources, all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do we have some announcements? Lucy, do you have one about uh, uh, the staff appreciation? I think you have Bruce, do you want to come up? So I think we have until Wednesday to get uh, any gifts that you have for staff appreciation uh, turned in. Um, we will be doing the vaccine clinic here on Friday, noon to 6. Please sign up if you're going to do that just to help us with number one. Yeah, that might be. There'll be a parking lot meeting December, Wednesday, December 8th. That's this coming Wednesday at 4.30. We'll be discussing, we're having a problem with storage of the signs. Uh, if anyone has a great idea on a small building or that type of thing, they'd love to have you come to the meeting and discuss it. We'll also be talking about getting people signed up. And we have one ball game coming up on Sunday at 12 o'clock noon. We're just going to create some problems with discussing. You're all invited. There is. All members can come to a parking lot meeting. Just bring some ideas. At 12 o'clock. Hey, do you think they all want to come to church before they go to the game? And we could work that out? I just don't know. This afternoon, um, Lucy Scott Pierce and I will be going to Georgetown Village to uh, bring the message uh, with Ruby and, and everyone that's there. So we're looking forward to that. If you'd like to be a part of that, certainly let us know. It's at 3.30 and, and uh, you're invited to be a part of that. So are there other announcements? Logan Draney has items to be picked up, so you're done? You got everybody's stuff? It's Brendan. Oh, it's Brendan's stuff instead of Logan's. So, we're good. Is, do you still need people to stop by? Yes. Yes. People still need to stop by and pick up their stuff. Any other announcements? If not, I encourage you to stand as you are able, and we will sing People Look East.
which is needed in this time of darkness, in this time of anxiety, in this time of worry. Let us be the people that bring light and hope and possibility into the world. As we are sent out, let us share these words together. Out of fear and into hope. Out of darkness and into light. Out of confusion and into peace. Today and tomorrow. We walk May your walk be one of light and possibility into the world sharing in that great love we have with us now. May it be so. Amen.